Welcome back to Grid Gym, guys. Today we're talking about some mindset stuff, some exercise stuff, some nutrition stuff, health stuff, recovery. All of those are important. All of those are your most important uh, pieces of the health game, and your health is your number one resource in this life. Uh, if you don't have your health, what are you going to do with your money? What are you going to do with your relationships? What are you going to do with your time? It's going to just be, uh, it's going to be a bummer is what it's going to be. You'll, uh, you'll not be able to experience your time the way you want to without your health. You won't be able to experience your money because you can't do anything and no amount of money is going to be able to buy you the health that you do want. And your relationships will suffer because you did not take care of your health. Today we're going to talk about any subject because I'm going to have a hard time not contradicting myself. Just fair warning. So a hard time not contradicting myself, but what we're going to talk about is one, productivity, and two, how do you jam pack so much into such a little time frame without sacrificing all the other priorities that you have? Because if health is the number one thing that you possibly have in your life, well then... Do you just focus on that? You don't focus on the other, the, the, the health, wealth, relationships, time are four great resources. You know, interesting thing, just to go off on a little tangent last night, uh, we were talking about the, the, the entrepreneurial thing, uh, and uh, someone was bringing up how they didn't think that they had it in them to be an entrepreneur, to, uh, to start their own business, to see it through, to have the discipline to do it. And I think that's an interesting concept. I think it would be very daunting, you know, like uh, being in it for, I'm, I'm going on seven years now. I've never had uh, a real job and any sort of kind of pseudo jobs that I did have. Like I never had like a regular job where you're just getting like an hourly or a salary paycheck. Um, uh, but I, I had two other jobs. I got fired from every job that I've ever had, essentially what I was trying to say. So I, I just don't think that it's in me to have a job. So it's kind of a weird thing. Like I'm giving this perspective to somebody else. But I really think if you take health, wealth, relationships, time, and you look at wealth, and you're going to say, what is wealth? Well, wealth replaced food and water. We can buy food and water with wealth now. So what it used to be health, food, water, relationships and time. So we had five great resources. Food and water got absorbed into wealth because now we can buy it. So what I really think that I think everybody has the ability to be whatever they want to a certain extent. Like I, I'm not, I would have to get my bones stretched to be six, nine. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go through all that. Like if I really wanted to be six, nine that bad, I could go get my bones stretched, but it'd be a little silly. I think anybody, if they want to dig down deep enough, can find what they want in their life. They can improve to a point. Uh, maybe they can't uh, maybe they're not like, not everybody gets their hopes, wishes, dreams and everything. But I think that it's possible if all the stars align, you know, and all that stuff, which is kind of bullshit anyway. But what do you got to do first to be able to get to that thing? Because whether it's entrepreneurship, health, you want to have the greatest relationships ever, you want to have the, the most uh, amazing time that you have here on this earth, what do you have to do? Because that's really what I'm going to have trouble not contradicting myself in this video about. Because before any of that, before any of that, if you talk to, no matter how many people that you talk to, they, like you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger and you're like, well, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course, he was always going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. The guy was committed. What I'm talking today about is commitment. Because you're not going to have everything figured out along the way. You're not going to know anything about business. I didn't know. I still don't know much about business. I, I, there's not really a lot that I know about business, and I've been studying this stuff hardcore for about three years. Um, but before you can do anything, you have to be committed. And I know that sounds crazy, but before anything, there's no there. Like you commit first, and you figure out the rest later. You don't try to figure out every little morsel along the way, and, and then go say, "Well, now I'm committed." It doesn't work like that. It works backwards from that. So how do I do this? Because like you, you're you're gonna feel overwhelmed in this whole thing. And one of the things that I notice that people do, they they don't prioritize out, and they don't list out the things that they're gonna that they're actually going to be. Uh, committed to. So what do you have? Uh, like for me, like this is what I do. This is what I, I do. Cause I don't, I don't try to play the balance game. Hey, I don't try to play the balance game. I don't try to be like, I'm going to live in balance always. No, for one balance is a snapshot in time. 
So if you're 24 years old and you're just starting your career and you're not and you're not in a relationship and uh, you know work is going to encompass a lot of your life. When you're 78 years old, work is going to be a little bit more. So it, like balance kind of depends. Now I also I just don't even try to do it. I don't even I don't even try to do it even a little bit. I look at what is important in my life because like so like for number one. There is me, just like there is you. You are the number one thing. You are the alpha and you are the omega of your life. Not to sound all religious or anything. But before anyone else, there is you. I'm not saying you're the only thing. I'm saying you're the first thing. Before anybody else, there has to be you. There has to be you. You have to put your you put yourself first and you are better at all the things that make you great and you're a better service to all those that you care about. But if you don't put you first, those things start to dissipate. So, and we're going to get more into that here, but before anything, there is you, you have to be committed to you. So if I'm writing this down, I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to write you in the middle of this. Okay. So I just put that down right in the center of the page. I put down my, usually I would do my name when I'm really feeling overwhelmed, when I'm really feeling like, man, I don't know what to do next. I don't know how I'm going to pull all this stuff up. I, I, I don't even know what I don't know. And it's freaking me out and I can't even start. I go to this. I put down my name right in the center of that piece of paper, Adam. I always start with me because I have to be committed to me. And the thing is, if you don't have a bunch of always, you're going to end up with a bunch of nevers. If you're not always committed to you, you might not all, you're going to have a bunch of nevers. You're never committed to you. So every day, exercise, every day, meditation, every day, uh, self-development. Every day I'm going to go to bed with Rach. I'm going to wake up with Rach. Uh, every day I'm, I'm going to have breakfast with Rachel. I'm always, I'm always going to wash the dishes, for instance. I'm always going to wash the dishes. I'm always going to go to work. I'm always going to be committed to that thing. So I put me down because I'm always committed to me. You always need to be committed to you. No one has ever been inside your head. No one has ever lived your life for you. Nothing happens to you. It happens because of you. If you have a bunch of, if you don't have a bunch of always, you're going to have a bunch of nevers and that creates some issues that creates some issues. So after I get that down on the piece of paper, I draw this big circle. I just put a big circle around this. Okay. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Then I start writing down. What are my big things? What do, what's important to me? What's important to you? So ask yourself that right now. You can do this with me. You can put your name right in the center of that and you can start writing this down. So you probably have, let's say you have work, you know, um, you've got like, I just got a relationship maybe, you've got friends, maybe you got a family, um, now you got a spiritual side to you that you want to foster, that you want to build, that you want to grow, that spiritual side of you. Okay? Uh, we are very spiritual beings. If you look back at anthropology, uh, our biology is actually designed, like we have bred ourselves into a, to being more and more and more spiritual as time goes on. Religion is actually the greatest technology that has ever existed uh, because it allows huge, huge, massive groups of people to work cohesively, even if they don't speak the same language. Okay, it was a way for it was a way that we worked together. Anyway, that's way off off subject. But um, what else is there? What else is there? You have your health, so you got like maybe some exercise. You're in some uh, some nutrition. Like you're all you're gonna eat every day. Most of us, you know. Sometimes there's fasting and things like that involved. Um, like for me, I got a house. I gotta maintain. Um, I also do the social media stuff. So I'm kind of a social media guy. Uh, and that's kind of like, that's kind of my list, right? So I've got like, we've got some things on that list. Okay. Now you look at that and you're like, Oh my God, there's no way he, he, he could balance all these. There's no way he could juggle all these. There's no way I can do that. Well, yeah, you can. So I'm going to show you how to do it here in a second. But the first thing is one got to be committed to you. And then you also have to be committed to every single one of these. And I know that sounds funky. That's like, wait, you can't be committed to all of them. Yeah, you can. Who says? Who's making these rules here? I'm not making any rules. Hey, uh, we were talking last night about the light at the end of the tunnel. Hey, I had this dream a long time ago, and th this was kind of the realization afterwards. But uh, so we think of the we think of the tunnel, and the light is all the way down at the end of the tunnel. Now, 
I had thought of that, you know, the lights at the end of the tunnel, we're pushing for it, we're pushing for the light, we can see the light, we're almost gonna win, and then we get to the tunnel, everything goes white, everything's great, every, you know, heavenly, right? So I was having this dream, and I was like, empty. There was no body, there was just kind of like a soul. I had no body, no not, nothing, I was just out in space, there was nothing for billions and billions and billions of miles, just, just uh, emptiness, not, not, black, uh, not necessarily black, just, emptiness right and all of a sudden and I was going along like that for years and years and years and years in this dream it was a pretty trippy dream uh sometimes um when people are talking to me they're like you do a lot of drugs do you and I'm like no nah, I don't do any drugs I just think a lot uh and I meditate a lot but so I'm in this dream and there's nothing and all of a sudden there's this I mean miles and miles and miles away there's this light I was like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. What's that light? And it's like I'm getting closer to the light because the light keeps growing and growing, just super, super slow. And then later on, after waking up from this dream, and the light kept getting bigger and bigger, but that was kind of the end of the dream, right? So after this dream, so you've got the light at the end of the tunnel. People think that the, most people kind of tend to think that the light is the illusion, that it's, oh, that's just an illusion out there somewhere. You're, that's a dream that you can't have. Now, the thing is, the light is not the illusion. The tunnel is the illusion. There is no tunnel. The light is real. It's out there for you to grab. I know that sounds metaphorical and all that stuff, and it is. But the light is real. The dream is real. The, I don't know, what you want to call it. That is the real part. The tunnel that is confining you is the illusion. And I think... Sometimes people think that the tunnel is directing them towards that, but you do not have something directing you except for your will pushing you and your commitment pushing you towards what we're talking about here. Okay, so once you will get committed 100% all in with you, and then you got to ask yourself two questions. Am I going to be all in or am I going to be afraid that I'm not enough? Because if you're afraid that you're not enough, you're not all in with you. You're not committed to you. Okay, so once you do that, then you make your commitment to your relationship, you make commitment to your exercise, to your nutrition, to your house, uh, for me, to the social media stuff. And a really easy example for me is, I bet you that somewhere around one out of 20 of these videos, I hit live without knowing what I'm gonna say. Or I hit that button that starts, that starts this whole little thing, I have no clue what I'm gonna say. I'm just, oh my God, I'm paralyzed. But, committed I'm gonna push myself forward as hard as I possibly can and I hope you guys help me in that if I ever miss one of these you better get on me and tell me hey we missed that show so I've got all these I've got friends I got family I got my spiritual side and you do too you can do this activity with me write them down now what's important what are what are the top three things in each one of these this is the next thing that, you, that, is, that is good to go over. What's the top three thing in each one of these? What do you have to do to, uh, to make sure that it's great? So if I'm going to exercise, what do I got to do? I got to push myself out the door. I got to get myself out the door. I work out every day at 8.30 a.m. The hardest thing is not the warm-up, is not the workout, is not the drive there. It is not changing my clothes. It's getting my butt out the door. I find all these other reasons and things to do to keep me from that. Push yourself out the door. You have to, and you won't do that unless you're absolutely committed that every single day you are going to do this. Okay, health, spiritual side. What do you gotta do? You gotta do it every, every day. You gotta make yourself do it. The interesting thing that I th find in this is that people put optional on all these other ones, even though they, these are their priorities. So their priorities is usually not work. Work is usually the thing that they like the least and their relationships, their friends, their family, their spiritual side, their health, their exercise, nutrition, all these other things. That's the thing that they tend to like the most. And the interesting thing is most people will make this the always and these the sometimes. This is a really interesting, and I've done this before too, so I'm not judging anybody when I say this. I do this too. I, I tend to make this the non-optional. This one is always going to be a thing, and the other is optional. Well, what's that going to do for your relationships? What's that going to do for your time, your, your health, your exercise, your nutrition, all that stuff? It doesn't do any good. So if you're 100%, like you're always going to show up to work, but you're not always going to show up to your exercise, that doesn't make any sense. If you're going to commit to one, you can commit to all. 
You just have to prioritize out how you're going to do this. If you always show up to work and you're committed to showing up, that means you're commit, you can commit. It's like walking out the, uh, the door without clothes on. It shows that you have priorities and you can make things a priority. You can always make time to put on clothes before you leave the house, right? So where, where did I put that? Where did I put that? Um, I'm going to have to grab a clock here in just a second, but so you have like your relationship. What are the top three things that you need to do in that relationship to foster it so that it grows? Because no relationships just work. That would be a really boring relationship that somebody gave up on. I'm talking about a uh, relationship. How are you going to put work into your relationship to make it grow, to make it become something more? Are you going to read books? Are you going to... Uh, do, uh, do eye gazing? Are you going to, uh, there's the 36 questions. If you Google that Google relationship, 36 questions, are you going to go through the 36 questions with people? The 36 question, I should probably explain that. The 36 questions is a practice that Rachel and I did a few years ago that, uh, that I really like it. It's uh, it just gives you 36 questions and at each point you, so you do 12 questions and you stop and you eye gaze for four minutes and then you do 12 more questions and you stop and eye gaze for four minutes and eye gaze, you just lock eyes and neither one of you looks away and it gets like awkward and funny and you giggle and laugh and uh, you start to create a little bit of a different kind of relationship uh, because it's questions that you might not have always asked and you get really weird answers and it builds your relationship. So how are you going to practice your relationship? So what are you going to do on the daily to make sure that your relationship grows? What are you going to do with your friends? So you got to keep up with them on some level. Maybe you shoot them a text every day or every week. Or what do you do with your family? Do you have like a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday noon uh, that you're always going to have lunch on Sunday at noon? Because if you don't have a bunch of always, you're going to have a bunch of nevers. So if you leave your, why would you ever leave your family? If you're not going to make work optional, then why would you make family optional? If you can commit to work, you can commit to always with your family. But, looking over my notes. I don't usually need to do this, but I do today. Yeah, nothing happens to you. And then you go through this list. So what do you need to do for your spiritual side? So I know that me personally, I'm going to meditate every day. Okay, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do, whoa. I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to ask myself the two questions. Am I going to be all in today? I'm going to do my planner. I'm going to be all in today, or am I going to, be afraid that I'm not enough today. And then I'm going to commit to uh, working hard to improve that day. And then I'm going to commit to focusing on the present priority. And then I'm going to commit to being a positive influence. And then I'm going to write down my goals. I'm going to write down five big, massive goals that are going to get me fired up for that day. And then I'm going to write down, and these are like long-term way out there goals, like maybe 50 years from now, 30 years from now, 10 years from now, uh, maybe tomorrow, who knows, but they're really big goals that get you excited. And then you write down your targets to give you action steps to get there, right? So what do you need to do today to get there? That's a, and then I actually go through and I write down, but that's getting a little bit away from, but do it. And then I do my meditation and then I read. So I get into my self development time and then I go into my study. Cause if, if I don't do that every day, then I make it, then it, it becomes optional. It'll be the same for you. It'll be the same for everybody. You make your, your list. You always have to come first. You're hundred percent committed to you. And then you're 100% committed to the relationships that are most important to you. And then you're 100% committed to work. And then you're 100% committed to your family, your spiritual life, your health, your exercise, your nutrition, your mindset, your recovery. If you do the social media game, you're 100% committed to that thing. You don't try to like, you can't just, or like I shouldn't say can't, but you're not just going to try to be committed to one thing. Because then you won't do it. It just becomes super optional. So, um, where is it? So if you think about it, I know some of this stuff, a lot of people want to say that uh, contend when we talk about this is that uh, that sounds selfish. It is in a good way. And if you don't put, because you're putting, you're putting the commitment to you first, right? So if you commit, put, if you commit to you first, it is selfish and that's not a bad thing. People want to make selfish a really bad thing. They want to make selfless this really great thing. But I think they both have their place. I think they're equal. I don't think one is good and one is bad. I don't even know if good and bad exist. Uh, I think that's kind of subject to your truths and what you think and believe in your belief structure. And I'm not here to tell you you're right or wrong because I don't know if a right or wrong exists. I don't know if a good or bad exists. There's what you believe and what I believe. And I think that if you were able to understand everything that 
um, that I'm saying, and I was able to understand everything that you want to say and express, then we might still disagree, but we understand each other. It's not, I don't think it's a big deal whether I agree with everybody. I think it's better if people do disagree with me. And I think that it's good if people do disagree with you because then you get to learn something really cool because then you get to gain another perspective on that matter, which I think, uh, which is kind of my goal. Like I think intelligence is based on the number of perspectives that you're willing to learn. So if you know something that I don't know, I want to know it. And it probably means that there's going to be a disagreement in between us at that point. So I'm not really, even in all of these videos, I'm not really seeking to persuade you. I'm not really seeking to influence you, uh, or I, I guess influence on a positive level. Um, but more to so that you can understand me and that so that hopefully I can under, understand myself more so that I can understand the world better and so that you can do the same. Did that get did that get convoluted at all? Did that contradict itself? All right. Uh, by the way, if you guys can please hit that share button and send it out to everybody, I really appreciate it. Obscurity is the biggest issue for Grit Jam. Uh, just people... The more people that know us, the better it is. So if you like the message that we're putting out, if you hate the message that we're putting out, either way, please click share and uh, and send it out. But the big messages here is that first and foremost, you have to be committed to you. And then once you are committed to you, you have to keep that commitment to you. Because if you have, if you don't have a bunch of always, you're going to have a bunch of nevers. So if you're sometimes committed to you, you're going to end up never committed to you. And you come first. Even when you, like, even, like, from the second you came into this world, you were the only person in your head. When you leave this world, you're going to be the only person in your head. Nobody's ever going to live this thing for you, only you're going to do it. So you put you at the forefront in a selfish way, but not negatively selfish, positively selfish, because now you can be of service to all those that you care about and you can you can be a better service to all those that you care about and you can be better at everything that makes you great but that's all i do i'll make it really simple i'll put me in the middle just like you're gonna put you in the middle and i get a hundred i make sure that before i do anything i'm 100 percent committed to me on this day that i'm feeling overwhelmed and then i write down all the things that go on in my life and then once I get those down, then I look at it and I'm like, okay, what do I, what is most important? What are the top three things I need to do in each category? And sometimes I don't even get to three. Sometimes I just like put a one dot there and I write something out. And anyway, I make so I make one to three things on each one of these that need to get done that day. And you can get all of those done. You can get you can commit to those. You can commit to the thing that's going to make your relationship hum. You can commit the thing that's going to get your health where it needs to be. You can commit to those things. But if you never commit to you first, you're going to have a really hard time doing the rest of these. But, but you have to commit up front to yourself. Nothing happens to you. It happens because of you. And the most interesting thing is that people will sacrifice. Like if you take the money thing, people will sacrifice Always, you're going to have a bunch of nevers. Best thing I've heard this week. Thanks, man. Ian says, if you don't have a bunch of always, you're going to have a bunch of nevers is the best thing he's heard this week, which uh, I have a ton of respect for Ian. So that, that means a lot. Um, but if you think about your dreams and how many times have you heard somebody say, uh, I would love to do X, but I have to take the kids here or there. Or they, so they make the excuse of their children or they make the excuse of their family for why they can't chase their dreams. Um, it's, it's just a, like, I don't, I don't understand how someone could live with that, that the idea that you're going to place the blame on somebody else that to not chase your dream because the dream is on you. So that's negation of commitment to yourself. Like, uh, if you say, I don't have time, it's the same thing. Time is a really great excuse, but uh, if you have time to make excuses for the things that will get you where you want to go, then you have time to do the thing 
that is going to get you where you want to go. Uh, you can do the same thing with mindset, exercise, nutrition, recovery. Uh, what is important in the mindset game? You know, for me, it's meditation and self-development. You know, exercise. I'm going to lift. I'm going to do cardio. I'm going to do some kind of steady state cardio every, not every day, but I'm going to pick one of those every day and do it every day. Nutrition. I'm going to eat my vegetables um, and eat expensive meats. You know, your grass-fed beef and your and your uh, your seafood and and fish and things like that that are a little bit better for you. Okay, so recovery is the other the last piece of the pillar. For the health game, right? Mindset, exercise, nutrition, recovery. Can you go to sleep every night at the same time? Can you wake up every night at the same time? And can you commit to those two things? Can you commit to relaxing at some point during the day, which could come down to your meditation time? So those are the things that you have to be committed to. And it's easy to blame and to try to excuse yourself from doing those things, but you're not giving anybody any lessons by doing that. If you're the first thing, the best possible way that you could show someone how to be courageous is for you to be courageous. So like doing these videos, extremely uncomfortable for me. So I hope that you guys see this as a sign of courage. It's like, well, if he can do that every day, then I can exercise every day. If he can do that every day, then I can eat vegetables every day. If he can do that, then I can go to bed at the same time every night and wake up at the same time every morning. If he can do that, I can read a book. If he can do that. So that's my way of being an example to the rest of the world is to grow me, but that's how you do it. Starts with you. Starts with you. You 100% committed to you, and then you write in the other things that are important to you that are in your life, and you start making a bunch of always commitments to these things. But that's what I got today. I hope you guys like this message. Um, please click share. Click the share button. Send this out. And it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's a private message or if it's public message. It's just more people hearing good stuff, putting positive messages in their brain. And instead of the garbage news channels that you get, uh, we get CNN, ABC, Fox. They're all just put in this sensationalized bullshit in your mind. And it doesn't matter if you, like some people are in love with CNN, some people are in love with Fox. I think they're both garbage. They're just both spilling garbage and poison all over your head. It's, just a, it's a bunch of sensationalized stuff. If you walk out, it's like the Rob Schneider uh, put that tweet out that said, if you walk outside and shake your neighbor's hand and have a conversation with them, that you might find that uh, the world is not as uh, as messed up as the news stations are making it sound. So hopefully this can become a channel for people to go for positive messages that they can uh, improve their lives upon. But uh, you guys know my goal, help billions of people in a positive way. Please help me do that. Um, Otherwise, tomorrow we have an interview with Kelly Hart. Kelly Hart's uh, kind of a big shot in the string conditioning world. Um, you guys can look her up before the interview, but should be really fun. I'm excited to have her on, and thanks for being here, guys. This is one of the most watched uh, ones so far in a, in a while, so this is pretty cool. It, uh, it floors me anytime that there's an audience here uh, that you guys take the time out of your day to come and hang out with me. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and we'll... See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.